Finally, there's a competitor to the Fies from Klipsch. What do I mean? I'm talking about a versatile pair of powered bookshelf speakers that have HDMI and ARC support, but don't cost as much as the Kef LS50 Wireless Mark IIs. What are they? They're the ELAC Debut Connects, baby. So let's see how these stack up against the competition, shall we? Hola. My name is Elon Osborne, and I like to talk about movies, audio, and music. And today I'll be going over these blue beauties from ELAC, the debut Connects powered bookshelf speakers. Specifically, this is the royal blue finish, but they also come in black ash or walnut. And as of this recording, are retailing for $599. What's in the box? Despite having a plethora of connections on the back, they just assume you already have a USB cable and or optical cable, so they are not provided, just FYI. But you do get a remote, batteries included, HDMI cable, 16 gauge speaker wire to connect the powered speaker to the passive speaker, power cord, and rubber feet. Oh, and these cloth grills are removable if that's your preference. These are rated at 50 watts per channel powered by a class D amp, sporting a three quarter inch tweeter, four and a half inch polypropylene woofer, a frequency response of 50 Hertz to 25 kilohertz when tested in a room, and a max output of 102 decibels at one meter. Now let's move on to all these connections on the back. We've got HDMI, which supports PCM audio over ARC with CEC commands, so you can control the volume with your TV remote. USB to connect your PC, which supports audio up to 69 kilohertz, 24 bit. A stereo RCA input, which supports both analog audio sources like a CD player, and can even support phono stage sources like a turntable. But you gotta make sure and use this switch here to select the correct source. Also sporting a grounding pin for your turntable. Optical input to connect an older TV without HDMI. And they also support a wireless Bluetooth connection, which is aptics compatible so you can enjoy up to CD quality audio wirelessly with compatible devices. USB here for updates and a toggle switch to choose between this powered speaker being either on the left or right side of the listening position. That's a nice feature just in case maybe there's a power outlet located closer to one speaker than the other. Oh, and let's not forget my favorite part, the subwoofer out to connect any subwoofer you might have on hand. And lastly, I do enjoy how you can turn the LED on the powered speaker on or off from the remote, just in case you don't want that bright little light shining in your face when you're in a dimly lit or dark room. How do they sound? Right out of the box, these mighty little speakers produced an airy, wide sound that was pretty impressive. That is until you get down to the bass frequencies. Granted, these do have what's called X bass, which enhances the bass response. As you can see on the remote, you can toggle X bass on or off, but unfortunately the reading material given to you doesn't exactly tell you how to do it. I just happened to get it from watching Joe and Tell's video. Shout out to Joe. And just FYI, the X space feature is already on out of the box, come to find out. So you hold down the X space button on the remote for a few seconds, which causes the LED to blink once or twice. Once means it's activated, twice means it's been turned off. But there's another catch. There are two levels of X space. Once you turn it on, just hit the X space button once, not holding it down this time, just a quick press, which turns it to max, enhancing the bass to its fullest. Whew. Yeah. But even then, when I was listening to some Lil Nas X or even DaBaby or even System of a Down, it did a pretty decent job, but the bass response was just okay. But something I like to do when testing out my music on any given speaker in this testing theater, I turn out all the lights and just let the music wash over me. So I played some Radiohead, my favorite film score Willow, melted my face off with some Ice Nine Kills, The Beatles, Lorne, just to name a few. And despite the lack of bass, the rest of the sound was very impressive. Since it was completely dark in here, there were times I forgot I was playing music through these little speakers because it sounded big with amazing clarity and stereo imaging. For convenience sake, since it's directly below the speaker, I hooked up one of the Bravis 12D subwoofers to it, and that's when the real fun began. No longer was it struggling just to pump out those sub frequencies, since the subwoofer was taking care of that now. Very well-rounded sound, lots of punch, yet smooth. So I highly recommend pairing these with the subwoofer, no question. 
But honestly, I wouldn't recommend these at all without a sub if you're going to mainly be using these with your TV in place of a soundbar. You gotta have that full bandwidth rounded audio with TVs and movies. So how would these compare to the fives from Klipsch? Well, the fives definitely have a lot going on for them. They are slightly larger than these Kinect speakers and have a better bass response just by themselves. The veneer is slightly more elegant and that goes for the removable grills too. I do like the old school rotary knobs on top of the fives, especially since it gives me a gauge on where the volume is. These Kinect speakers don't have an indicator on where the volume is, so I'm not sure if it's where I like it to be, especially with TV and movie watching, since it seems like every TV show nowadays requires its own set volume. The fives have a one inch tweeter housed in their signature Tractrix horn, whereas the Kinects have a slightly smaller three quarter inch tweeter. One big difference between them is that the fives are buying internally, whereas the Kinects have a passive crossover system. That's why you have this pretty cheap little 16 gauge wire as opposed to this much thicker and higher quality 4 pin audio cable that splits the high and low frequencies to their own separate amps. And this little speaker wire isn't that long. I have the speakers on either side of this 65 inch LG TV and it barely spans the distance. The four pin cable with the fives is very long so you can have a lot of slack even when the speakers are pretty far apart. Other than that, they are virtually the same in that they have identical connection support on the back. So given the shortcomings of the connects compared to the fives, I do wish they were more like an even $4.99 instead of $5.99. Although they did just come out, so I'm sure they'll go on sale during the holidays, etc. But all that aside, sure, the connects aren't internally biamped, the audio cable isn't as high quality, the bass response isn't as good, whatever. On paper, yes, the fives are better. But pound for pound, if you paired a subwoofer with both these connects and the fives, you could honestly go either way and still have a fantastic soundbar alternative or perhaps an awesome office desktop setup, you name it. They really do sound incredible when paired with a sub. Still better than a soundbar, that's for sure. So I think after a while, when sales numbers come in after this initial launch, if they were to bring the price down a bit, these could easily compete with the Fives as an all-in-one entertainment hub, being able to connect it to a TV, PC, mobile device via Bluetooth, and turntable. And there you have it. Thanks so much for joining me on this review of the debut Connects powered speakers from Elac. Are you as excited as I am that there's finally something besides the fives to choose from when it comes to powered speakers with HDMI? Are you still looking for a great soundbar alternative that you can use your lonely subwoofer with? Let's start a conversation, people. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening.